I'm going to begin by addressing the elephant in the room. If you think I'm talking about myself, one, rude, two, that's exactly what I was trying to do. You see, from a young age, I believed that if I made fun of myself first, then no one would have the opportunity to do it. I've been fat for as long as I can remember, and I've been called it an insult more times than you can count. And it hurt being called that, because that's what they intended to do. It wasn't just to make fun of my size. It was done to make me feel like I didn't belong. Because who wants to be friends or associate themselves with a fat kid? That's why I used to, and still do, try to make people laugh. Maddie Zam talks about this so powerfully in her hit song, Fat Funny Friend, that if you're fat, you can't be too loud, too proud. That you've got to be nice to everyone, or you end up being the butt of their jokes. That you can only be the best friend in Hollywood movies, and not the leading lady. And you're only part of the story to add some comic relief to the narrative. When I was seven, I used to attend an after-school drama class. I wanted to be an actor, be on the stage. The irony is not lost on me right now. But that dream was quickly squashed. Another kid in my class told me that fat people can't be actors, that they don't hire fat people for leading roles. This kid was just a little bit older than me, but they were already thinking there was something wrong with me. For being fat, that I couldn't be something because of how I looked. When I was 16, I got my GCSEs, nine A to C grades. We'll ignore the D I got in history. I was proud of myself. I was going off to sixth form to get my A levels, and this would lead on to me going to university to get a degree in marketing. That good feeling quickly disappeared when a relative said to my parents, "Oh, I didn't realise that Rachel was that clever." I was a fairly normal teenager, well, normal for a teenager going through an emo phase, and one that was picked on for being overweight. But why did that scream that I couldn't be intelligent? Looking back now, I realise it was probably because of how I looked. Because how could anyone be smart and not know how to control their eating habits? We are taught by society, by the media, by our friends, by our relatives, that we should be terrified of coming fat. And I don't blame people really, because as a fat person, I know how we get treated. Throughout my childhood, my teen years. And even moments as an adult and in my career, I've been made to feel like being fat is a bad thing. One of my first jobs out of university, I was praised by a colleague for merely eating a salad at lunch. To be polite, I just told him I was trying to lose a bit of weight. A few weeks later, I received disappointing comments when I was no longer eating no salads. I overheard a manager making jokes about my weight with my fellow colleagues. I've even had someone I used to work with tell me I was being brave for feeling I could wear such bright colours on a work night out. Of course, I'd, if I'd worn dark clothes, my fat would have instantly disappeared. But the thing is. None of these things were anything to do with my abilities or my job role. These kind of judgments are rooted into our beliefs so early on in life that we don't even question it. We believe that fat people are bad and irresponsible, and thin people are good and successful. As a society, we even blame fat people for being discriminated against, because of course we must have done it to ourselves. Being fat can even stop you being hired for a job. In a 2016 study by Sheffield Hallam University, 
participants were asked to evaluate candidates for different job roles. It was determined that obese women were less likely to be hired. All similar abilities, all similar qualifications, all same experiences to be able to do the job well. But they were merely not going to be hired because they were overweight. When we eventually do get hired, we get paid less. According to research by the University of Exeter, women who are one stone heavier than other women will earn £1,500 less a year. Are they scared that we're going to use all that extra money on food? We're even less likely to be in leadership roles, according to data from the Health Survey of England. So we can't even advocate for change at the top. The problem is, is that weight-based discrimination is pretty much legal in all parts of the world. Certain characteristics, such as gender, race, religion, and sexual orientation, are, quite rightly, protected under law. This means employers can't use them to discriminate. Of course, we know that including weight as a factor in the hiring process shouldn't happen, but it does whether this is done openly or these kind of biases are rooted down deep in our subconscious. There are probably people here in the room that have felt the need to judge someone for their weight, whether you've realized it or not. And you've also probably felt the need to reassure someone about their weight when they've made comments about it. I've lost count of the amount of times that people said to me, you're not fat, you're beautiful when I've made jokes or comments about my own weight. Why is it one or the other, and not both? But the thing is, I don't want reassurance. I just want to be treated the same. That's why I'm sharing my story as a fat, funny marketer. Well, one of those might be debatable. I'll let you pick that one. I don't want anyone else going through the same experiences I did thinking that being fat is a bad thing, that you'll only be taken seriously if you lose weight. Because I've had those feelings, and I've stopped myself going for opportunities, because I was scared of how I was going to be perceived. And I've even stopped myself talking back when people have looked down on me because of my weight. I don't want another seven-year-old thinking they can't be something just because of how they look or a 16-year-old questioning their intelligence just because they shop in the plus-size section. And I don't want adults being scared to sit in the lunchroom at work for fear of being judged just for eating. And I really don't want anyone missing out on their dream job role just because the hiring manager hates fat people. We need to stop varying people on their BMI score a frankly out-of-date form of measurement with numerous doctors and universities decrediting its use. We need leaders and business to take note and take action. Value our mental health, our self-worth, our abilities and our drive to succeed, and not on what the scales say. Now, I'm not saying that you can't lose weight and change your body if you want to. It's your body and self-love is so important. I'm also not glorifying obesity, ignoring the health concerns. I'm saying that we should be able to do what we want with our bodies without it impacting our careers. We need to celebrate the diversity of people in business because there is no wrong way to have a body, but it is wrong to be fat phobic. And we need to remove these kind of prejudices from every step of our lives. That plus-size glass ceiling needs breaking for all of us. And every single inch of me is going to do that. Thank you.